Okay, hello, Jesse here, and welcome back to my channel. Today, we're going to talk about some key differences in purchasing a property in Texas that might be different um, if you've purchased property in other states or you're coming from another state and you're getting information from a friend who it, this just does not apply out here. So a little bit about me, I am a licensed realtor and I'm also a licensed loan officer in the state of Texas and I spent the last 15 years working in corporate real estate in the capacity as asset manager and auditor of all facets of the real estate process um, when it comes to like foreclosure and corporate owned property. I'm going to give a little bit of it to you but I want to let you know I am not legal advice or financial advice and definitely um, you know, work with an attorney if you have additional information. If you're looking for property in Texas, I can help you. But actually, that is going to take me to my first point, which can you see on here? My first point, which is the attorney. The attorney. Where is the attorney in Texas in your real estate transaction? The realtor is not an attorney. They are just simply completing it. And if you have questions on your contract outside of generic things, then you need to speak with an attorney. And that's also what is also interesting about that. And at closing, you will be signing a general warranty deed or a special warranty deed, some type of deed. Um, we don't use quick claim deeds out here, but some type of deed that is prepared by an attorney and by an attorney on staff, probably at the title company, but they're also not your attorney. And so if you have questions or need interpretation on that, you have to seek an attorney. The whole thing is done with legal documents. They're legally binding contracts, but none of it is reviewed for your best interest unless you're seeking an attorney to consult and to look at for your needs. So that is something to consider. And I know that's different than Another thing that is different about the state of Texas is that we don't have transfer taxes. So when a property transfers in other states, they have a percentage of a tax that is, you know, you'll see it on your closing disclosure or your settlement statement or your HUD-1 settlement statement. Um, it'll be a transfer tax. We do not have a transfer tax in Texas. So that's something that you will not see. And um, maybe we make up for it by our high property taxes. Our property taxes, by the way, I'll redo that video where my daughter isn't talking in the background and interrupting me, but property taxes are determined by each county and can, can vary greatly depending on the county that you're in and the school districts that you're in. The third thing that is a little different in Texas is that we don't have a specific inspection, property inspection that has to be completed for a property to close. And what I mean by that is I'm specifically referencing like in California, they have section one and section two termite inspections. They have um, water heater strapping that must take place. Well, in Texas, we don't have that property without termite inspections. Now, if you're lender wants you to have a termite inspection as a condition for funding, then yes, of course, you're going to get a termite inspection. I would highly suggest a termite inspection. Termites do a lot of damage to properties and they are prevalent down here in Texas. The whole south area, south, you need a termite inspection. I would highly encourage it. But no inspection is specifically required um, statewide, like a you know, a sidewalk inspection or any of that. I know when I used to sell in Florida, I mean, the, the, the cities down there, you know, Miami Dade, certificate of use, all that kind of stuff. We don't have a specific one, but don't be fooled. Your house can be considered, you know, demolished, condemned, or an issue like that, depending on the city, but statewide, we don't have a specific um, uh, inspection that is required. Another thing that you need to know about purchasing property in Texas is that you are either married or you are single. We don't have, they don't recognize the separation status like they do in other states. And so if you are moving down here and you are legally married, your divorce has not finalized, then your ex or your spouse is um, expected to sign the deed and a, on a perm, on a primary residence. So if that's something that you don't want, you need to greatly consider that and you probably need to seek attorney advice. Yeah, so that's what uh, I have for today. I hope this was helpful. I will be doing a whole lot more um, real estate and lending related videos, um, specifically talking about like seller financing for sell by owner, um, different neighborhoods out here if you're interested in that, how to look at your closing disclosure, loan estimates, um, how do you know you have the lowest rate? 
how can you still buy a property out here? What should you do if it's before a recession, if we're facing a recession, different products, all that kind of stuff. I do hope to have some more content related to that. Um, but you know, I got a lot of, I got a lot of things going on, so it's a little hard for me to get it together, but I do thank you for your time. If you have any questions, let me know, leave them down below and I will see you in the next one. Bye.